monster tournament, but it's good you mentioned Sphinx there because a bit quiet. Everyone on that ends team after Madden was a bit quiet on that first map of Vertigo. They all need to wake up right here, right now. Map picked by FaZe Clan coming into it. And I, feel, I feel like this is the second map picked by, picked by FaZe Clan, right? You float <laughs> your perma bet, you know, or your perma ban, excuse me, you know that's being picked. So you've already gamed on the veto. It's so cool, too. Like, Kerrigan being one of the few in-game leaders who's, like, willing to just really throw a spanner in the work to come, in the, come to the map vetoes, like, really looking to switch things up, and he's done it again. Known for Diha, an extended battle, needs some help from his teammate, pulls Sphinx into his death. They know Diha's here as well. There goes Madden, and this pistol round is collapsing so quickly for Entz. That was one of the most inaccurate pistol battles we've seen. Neither player really shout out to Dia for it, but Dia recovers <laughs> that time back toward the sandbags. Gets two with the USPs at closer range. Twist was a clean and concise headshot. And you said it was collapsing for Entz. However, it suddenly turned. brokey has got to get back into a better position with that bomb as he went forward to find a kill. Hades is the one trying to take the peaks and do the damage. They know Dia's still towards sandbags. How much damage is on him? indetermined because they haven't been able to call that position from the short pipe. This is a problem, Broke. He's going to try and battle it off. He's aware. He wants that USP as well, and he's going to go the long way around. He's only got 23 HP. Hades on 89. Oh, he's double-styled this. Brokey, man, this is so sick from him. Starting to use his mind over matter to win out rounds. No kit in play, so he knows he's got the time to keep him off the bomb. Doesn't need to overcommit to the peak too soon, but does have to check it, and Hades looks back at the right time. I think he's got this with the full defuse as well. Yeah, it, it, Brookie played that just about as well as possible. You got to admire the risk to just kind of take a deep breath, make that run across the bridge, find the player over towards sandbags. But man, Diha had a great return of like karma for that yeah. entire magazine missing that whole time in the initial battle. It looked so sketchy, so ugly. In to this. This is the game just giving him one. This isn't even the best part of that. For me, it's that he stays with 2 HP and just yeah. stays alive. Doesn't peek, doesn't budge, doesn't do anything because they had to can deal with him. Yeah, he's got his teammate saying, I got the cross. Like, if I start shooting, maybe they're coming at you, but just stay tucked in. They're obviously trained on your position. What a tough pistol round to win for Entz, but they've got their first round on the board early. AK-47s on Twists and Rops. Khalil on Brokey. Three rifles and two MP9s for the Entz defense, and they're going to need a lot of nade damage early on. I wanted to go for the boost a little bit quicker than that, but the nade's Ooh. doing it. They're not, they're not figuring that part of it out yet. But yeah, that's, that's not a great right. time over there. It, it's at this point, that's expired. That, there's a timer on that play. You're trying to catch them as they cross. There's no need to overextend on it. They saw the utility coming in. They took the damage, fall off it, and get back in line with the rifles at range. Now, this is unsurprising. Phase. They got a bomb plant down. I know Alex was talking about the more commonality of picking up a single rifle, even when you don't, just to break the economy down a yep. little bit on the CT side, maybe make things awkward. You get a bomb plant and you know you were that close, absolutely you're buying as far into this as you can. Tell you what though, Ence is gonna be is in a lot of pain right now. One Molotov, one smoke, one flashbang for the rest of the round, a minute on the clock. FaZe actually not only have some very strong weapons, but they're actually also winning out in the economic aspect. And now a five on four provided by Rops. Another boost up this time. Able to manage it, but they need to get some kind of production. Rain gets tagged down to 57, but no kill quite yet for Ents. Yeah, that smoke. It's fine if you're on the level ground, but as soon as you're boosted up, it's just easy to see through and spot the head. They couldn't land the head shot per se, but it is Dia again that's going to be challenged. He'll get up on top of the pallets. Sight stack. Maiden already jumping in. Madden already trying to hold that off. That Dia's got one. Wanted to try and transfer over toward the barrels. Knew that they were going to be wrapping inside of the site, but the Molotov down, he couldn't get there. Spinks still holds the derm and holds the line. Hades, well done from above to find Rops, but Rain, the one with the deagle, not with a weapon, is already on the flank, unfortunately. As you can see from down below, Madden staring in that direction. They knew they made contact with someone over toward that side of the map, and Hades turns around having... Heard the shots from the Deagle, didn't even feel them because, unfortunately, the Deagle, a bit like Simples the other day, just doesn't land at range. Good information from Deha. While he's hearing those footsteps kind of running, he's, he's taking a little bit of a risk jumping over, seeing the number of bodies that he spots, tucking himself into this position to get that first kill. That Molotov, I think, partially because of the information he gathered, the Molotov is perfectly placed over towards Sandbags, makes this hit very disjointed, so takes away a lot of the strength of it and might have just straight up saved the day in a 4v5. 2 to nothing for Entz. We're going to get a little bit of a technical pause, but it should be too. I think Kerrigan, absolutely, that was by design. No, well, I mean, obviously, they left it in the pool. He, they knew it was going to be picked up. And I think it was it's, it's as much psychological as anything, because even if they lose that, okay, what's well, not normally a map they play, this is their map choice. If they win it, now they can potentially go 2-0. You get that early start, that early buffer. But the good news is, if you are an Ents fan, the 2 nothing start and the fact that there's no guns for FaZe this time, having gone aggressively into the last purchase, Twist's aware of the fact that there's a push. Ooh, misses the shot. Very late reaction. Saw him, and I think hesitated if he was going to try and hold trigger discipline, or if he had to shoot. 
but he catches him going back to long. That'll do for Twists. The one-man advantage and a little bit of damage on the DF through the wall. They oh, try and no. compensate for that, and Rops gets snappy. That's... You can't give away a free one when you're already down a man. I was going to say, that's that's the one mistake you get, that little one D gun from Twist to follow it up with pushing into Rops' Tech 9. This is brutal. Spink's doing pretty much all he can. He's going to push up long. He wants to guard the gun. Twists, though, is going to grab it right now and try and wrap around. It was a little bit too far to reach for Spinks to do anything about other than just keep an eye on that position, but I don't even think he spotted him. It's, it's just a good position to get information as the CT side. Now, the tough part is he can no longer fall back into the bomb site, and there's a time limit on this. Twist is going to turn the corner any second. Yeah, nice, easy kill as Spinks is just waiting for them to cross in. All the noise, all the attention towards the main choke point. Rops is going to get another, and with unarmored pistols, like, FaZe just picks them apart. That, one by one. Yeah, that's brutal. That hurts. This is not the way you want to turn things around. Trying to get that last gun down, they'll send the pistols after it. Rain could still justify perhaps sending his Tech 9 in that direction because not only would, and he is going to do it, he's at the barrels, not only would he potentially get Madden, but there's other rifles in that sight. Ooh. But that's fine. I, again, they're... You can see it, the M4 on the ramp. Even if he doesn't get that kill, he wants to get the gun and get out if Madden runs away. If he does die, whatever, they've got the round secured. Yeah, it's all good. Kerrigan and Twist. Actually, Kerrigan runs all the way back to the bomb just in case there was some kind of a kit in play, some kind of a sneaky play coming from Madden, but that's not going to happen whatsoever. So FaZe, as unlikely as it is, get their first run of the board with Deagles and Tech Nines ringing out. Fist bumps across the whole squad. It's Ents who are going to be putting their back foot economically, but still still pretty decent weaponry coming out. Three M4s are going to be in the hands of the Ents defense. Good shot from Twist. And, and just a shout out to, to Kerrigan a little bit, because we touched on it in our little intro by the trophy stand, Jason. Yeah. And obviously we've heard from Kerrigan in the interview with Heku, the preparation aspect. They were up at 2 a.m. last night because they're, they're practice room beside our little gaming room that ESL hooked us up with. And I heard them chatting and popped in. They were all kind of just, they weren't really prepping per se. There was, a, I think, Rain played a little DM and then he was watching some YouTube videos. Brokey and uh, Robin, the coach, Twists and Rops were all surfing, but Kerrigan was sat watching the previous game that they just finished and preparing notes for the maps. He was all invested yeah. 100% on today's veto and map pool. So pretty cool to see his dedication even at 2 a.m. And then he woke up today, saw him outside. And he said, got to go, got to keep working. All right, cool. Life of an in-game leader. I love it. Just right. trying to get the big picture plan while the rest of the players can focus on how their individual battles and their individual positions are going to go. But Kerrigan's got to know all, a little bit about a lot of things. Brokey boosted up. He spots one, but you're not going to get that shot. No, you're not. You could potentially, if he's going to stay there, he's so desperate for it. He's got the information. If he keeps spotting it, the one thing they could do is he, Twist could take the fight, but he doesn't know anyone else is closer. You could go for the, the party boost. Get out. <laughs> I can't nice. believe he actually went for that. What a madman. The balloon boost we used to see, you could actually spot that position from but it's you got a clear mid to do it first and yeah brokey gone down they get a little bit overzealous i think with that positioning yeah and interesting as well like he, he just they never even considered that there was a player close up despite the fact that he was spotting someone that that's a that's an i wouldn't say like a super common setup but it, it does happen frequently brain gonna even things up in a four on four down to 24 hp snap he has the deagle one of the weaker weapons he's got the headshot under rops they've been whittled down kerrigan to half hp rain to 24 health and the defense is starting to shift over so Hades supports from jungle. Madden tries to get up close, but two AKs firing back through the wall and twists. He goes right around toward the catwalk. It's just Spinks, one on three. Low HP, confirmed certainly on rain. Kerrigan's damage undetermined, but now is confirmed and taken down. And Spinks knows he's got a chance in this based on that information, but he's got to time it and bait it out perfectly. He does get the high HP player, but rain too close for comfort, able to trade immediately 2-2. Yeah, all agree kind of ease them into the pressure of this level of a, of a, of a grand final. But also for FaZe, this is not going to be nerve-wracking at all for any of these guys who have played on the biggest stage, who did just take a trophy over in Katowice in the Spodek. This is, a, this is a little bit of a rematch as well. Actually, hold the thought. Hold the thought here, because this is looking like it might get spicy. Off angle for Hades, but he missed the timing. He was trying to turn away from a flashbang that didn't come in. Rops, big. he's going to change the pace on this play. If he gets in undetected by the third, the fact that he's already at the sandbags, that's good enough on its own, but he could slide right out. And Diaz got his aim trained back toward that side of the little horseshoe, the wall. Rops is gathering so much information. Here's Madden jumping back and forth. 
probably hear some footsteps from Snappy as well, so he's talking it over with his teammates, well, their position. The other side of this is because they know there was a missed shot on the cross at Long, they were going to be falling back through bathroom, so Kerrigan's already clearing that. Smoke as well at the corner on the, the flower pot. They can't boost behind that. Twist can get a more aggressive. They're just slowly taking away map control right now. That also puts Hades in a really awkward position. This is this is really tough for him to deal with. Yeah, as you can see, as he slides out, just missed the timing on it. Sphinx, he's got one. He knows Long is an issue. He's got a long time. There's the bounce from Rops. He's able to get two, actually, and Brokey finds the player at dice boxes, and that's it. It's all over. Snappy's going to eventually go down in a one versus four. I was going to say at the start of this round, they did play this map. Obviously, uh, Dust talked about it as well. This is like a, a rematch from the initial group stage and started the, their tournament run with the best of three against FaZe in the group stage. They beat them two to one. They beat them on overpass as well as the third deciding map there. That was a 16-13, a very slim, narrow victory. Playing again here and obviously hoping for a similar result because otherwise you're facing the prospect of having to go for the reverse sweep in a best of five. Eight different nations represented in this final, by the way. Two Danes leading on either side, which I think speaks testaments to the Danish Counter-Strike scene and how much yeah. leadership they do have. It's a pretty decent culmination. We've been saying it for years that the Danish scene is like one of the deepest we got, and obviously we know they're one of the more tactical scenes and nationalities that we have in Counter-Strike. So two Danish in-game leaders here showing their quality across the entirety of ESL Pro League. A long tournament as well, five weeks. It's taken for us to get here, all down to this series. He was dead either way, was he not? But he may have caught out Rain. Brokey might have just saved, Rain, saved Rain's life as he was setting up for a smoke inside of the site. Fortunately, we had a babysitter on the scene. The other nationality duplicated, therefore, is a pair of poles, Hades and Dia on the end side. Rob's already in catwalk. He's going to start to clear and hold the stairs, the smoke out. Pretty clean and concise take right now from FaZe. Twist's going to be planting the bomb. Has been so this should be another round to go four to two for FaZe. Nice shot. Interesting with that buy in the last round from Ents, that, that complete force up. It's slow to get guns back in their hands. FaZe is going to have a four to two lead before the rifles come back out for Ents. They're going to have to get started right away. Madden and Spinks in the underpass just waiting. Nobody from FaZe really has to challenge anything. They don't care whatsoever. Everyone's going to evacuate back towards T spawn. Brokey looking like he wants a uh, stat pad, and he gets punished. That's what happens when you play, you know, at times a little bit arrogant. It happens. Good kill from Madden to find the deal headshot, but that AK-47 Rain's going to make sure that's not going to be recovered, although they did go for it. 4-2 to two heading into round number 7. Op in the hands of Hades. M4 is picked up for the rest events, and they've got a decent amount of nades as well. No kits, though, for the CT side, so keep your eyes peeled on those retakes for the pacing, for the speed. Yeah, two backs turned and exposed, so good kill. From Brooke. Hades with that all. Going to push up again towards Fountain, towards Party. And just going to back off after one quick shot over towards Long, the reposition. Triple nade. Ooh. That goes way deeper. And Dia eats it down to six. Rops trying to find an opening. Clears his angles, hard covers everything that could be a problem for him trying to get position outside of Monster. No utility in it. Tempting, tantalizing to go through that, but it would have to be very, very careful of the barrel's position. Spinks, meanwhile, first time they've had any map control or at least gifted no contest for mid, so he's going to try and push that connector. He may even be able to divide the offense if he dares go up the ladder. I think he's going to. Oh, snappy big job to do, sees the feet. Kerrigan goes down. Smoke off towards the tunnel. Sphinx is going to wrap around towards the B bomb site. Now he might get Rops and he might clear things out. He's going to hear these footsteps, but the main thrust of this attack is coming towards A. And it's Hades with an AWP. It's Diha there as well with that low HP, with that 6 HP. Madden's on his horse as well, but if they can bust in here quick with utility, the op can't do much, and certainly the 6 HP won't want to commit a whole lot either. Excuse me. He moves all the way out towards truck, just seeing what he can get. Oh, he's got one, and Madden get the other two. That seemed much easier than I expected.
That happened so fast. Yeah, it sure did. Almost like a triple collateral. They all died so quickly and in tandem with another one another. But yeah, that was good information. Spinks all the way up. As soon as he catches Rops rotating back around, pretty yeah. obvious they're going back over toward the A site. And that's why you saw FaZe just pick up the pace immediately. The call came in. We, we got to go now. There, there's just a time limit before they're going to rotate back. We have to try and hit this window. Low percentage round. Good job from Diha and Madden. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, okay. Yep, not that, that, that's why it was so fast, Matt. <laughs> we'll give it to him. Kerrigan through the flames, doesn't want to waste any time. Second Molotov down as well at the park, though, so it does slow them considerably in trying to fan out across the top of the map. Rops, as always, will be the anchor over toward B. He's lining up utility right now, so Rain's getting a little bit closer. Spraying the smoke, Rain. A little bit careful of the fact that there is two players on the other side of that. Madden being one of them as an AK, so his tracers would show, but Snappy could easily slide out with an M4 that's silenced and therefore discreet in those situations. Uh, lots of contact, so fast contact from FaZe, but they aren't actually committing to anything yet. Bomb's still back toward their spawn, Rops holding it, trying to paint out some reaction from the CTs. They've got one, but it's not favorable. Spinks comes to the bathroom and he's cleared both Kerrigan and Twists. I don't think Twists ever expected him to come back at it. Good little hop from Rain over the crosshair of Snappy. Now the B-bomb site under pressure. Bomb on Rops' back is gonna follow it up, and Brokey's coming in with the AWP as well. Now there's no nades. There's no nades for this FaZe side of things, so there's gonna have to be some straight up duels, and I think they're trying to find the timing of when this rotation comes. Trying to get someone from Ants to start peeking into the bomb site. Excuse me. Bronky's going to throw a smoke into the site. There's Rain peeking out. Madden just wanted to know where they were. And he gets his head removed into a three on three. So one in window, that's been called. One at jungle, that has been revealed as well. But Brocky has so much work to do to try and figure out exactly where they're going to go inside of that smoke position. Bomb recovered. AWP's not going to peek because they want the second player closer. They want Spinks to get in a position to be able to capitalize. Should Brocky, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, get that close. He actually hit that. The nade does damage. He wants more. He tries to battle it out, but he can't. Caged in and eventually goes down four on four. Excuse me, four, four scoreline. A one on four that started out and Brocky nearly made it work i mean i think in a certain sense i think he made that work fantastically even to get those two kills that's a lot of money taken away even even in a loss that's that's a huge performance from brokey the level this guy's playing at at the moment is so scary so fast at the moment and this felt very winnable for a moment there good shot from hades as he comes in and we're all tied up again it's phase without that plant they're relegated back to deagles only armor on twists that was a great round for Spinks, that double kill in towards bathrooms. Good to see him having a multi-kill, an impactful multi-kill. After a very quiet vertigo. Hades sees the shadow, easy shot to care again, follows it up, rain falls. Finally, some economic control and hopefully a clean and straightforward round. You're right, because the kills that came through from Brokey certainly made them have to reinvest a lot more than they would have liked to. Spinks. Still sticking around, sees the bomb, sees another player in front of him. Not a bad three kill from him and Hades with the other two. No one else really needing to do anything. And we're into the next round just like that. So round 10 with a one round lead for Ents. Yeah, nice and quick there. Good shooting from Hades with that AWP. Some fine precision. He talked about it in an interview, kind of funny. He's like, yeah, we have a pretty, a pretty aggressive team at times. So sometimes when I'm playing, I, I sometimes feel like I'm either, you know, maybe we take over a bomb site and the opposing team's saving so I don't get to do much with the AWP or, he just feels like sometimes he can't quite have the impact he would always like, but not too upset about it as long as they're winning. Here we go through the smoke. Twist and Brokey towards playground. Rain and Kerrigan in the underpass. Sphinx again going to get challenged and pretty quickly as well. Rops and short right around the edge of the smoke. It's Diha to spam him through. Sphinx actually just bails out. Kerrigan getting spammed through from the bottom of the water position. Rain's going to cover that off with the smoke because that door due to expire at any moment due to damage. It's been some very early, very fast and aggressive plays from both of these teams. Spinks continuing to be so impressive. It's going to be the one that's forward again in bathrooms. He's not scared of taking these aggressive positions and fights. Slow reaction that time, though, and Twists takes him down. It's Kerrigan immediately afterward that finds Madden, and now Snappy's alone. He's flashed off. He's aware they're getting closer with the low HP. 
How does he survive <laughs> that? That's ridiculous. Kerrigan couldn't hit a single shot, and Snappy not only burns him, but he stays alive to take out Twist. Now it's the boot on the other foot, and Brokey might be broken. He's got to fall off this, does find the first on to Snappy, but the bomb down inside of the site, and it's an AWP. The crossfire arrived. All they needed was a single kill. They could not get, and it's six to four. Oh, I cannot believe Snappy saves the day. The Molotov with Kerrigan coming in, and he has a Molotov out. I thought it was surely over, as I think most people did, but just low HP on Kerrigan. Good job from Twist as well. That's the exact battle that he lost earlier. This time, very aware of the angle from Sphinx, able to shut him down without any kind of a real fight. And that's the disaster. Not only the Molotov kill onto Kerrigan, but the fact that you don't kill that player and he's able to grab one more after the fact, so brutal. What could you do but shrug? Six to four, two round lead for Ence. This defense starting to look pretty solid. Four in a row now for Ence's CT side on overpass. Brokey recovers the solo scout that was dropped by Kerrigan. So Ence looking to extend this to a three round lead. Again, this being phase map choice, I almost call the first map despite being picked by Ence neutral territory based on the mind games. Hades still waiting it out inside of the site, watching bathrooms. Very slow approach this time from FaZe. Obviously, they don't have a wep the weapons to work with, don't have a lot of utility. Just trying to find picks and optimism. We know they've won rounds with lesser weapons in this series, in this game even. But that was over toward the B site, and this time the focus is on A. The scary one for me, Jason, is just how aggressive Sphinx wants to be. Sure, he went down last round. They got saved by Snappy. But ever since he started trying to take away map control, and unlike the first few rounds where FaZe could kind of fall into defaults and setups right. with both sides, he's putting them under pressure. Yeah, I, we, we saw this in the game yesterday, and obviously we've seen it in ends for some time as, as this team has kind of climbed the ranks of Counter-Strike is just fearless. I mean, you think him, you, if you if you were watching the Vertigo game that we just witnessed, Madden on that T side, we're just willing to walk up a ramp as well. These guys aren't scared of taking fights. Sphinx is eventually going to go down. There's that rain. Deagle can't get the last one. Hades is left all alone to hold the fort. He's got two, and Rops cannot connect with that Deagle, even taking his time and trying to line it up. Fair play. Good shooting from Hades. Having impact here on overpass. Try to double swing that AWP as well so that Rops could have a better chance at the shot. Just doesn't get it done. Rops robbed by the Deagle. Rain, though, looking marvelous as ever with it. Back at his two stunners. It'll force some reinvestment, but that's about it. Unfortunately, they won't get anything else from it. So it's going to be Ents still in a full buy situation. Still an AK for Madden to work with. But an AWP back out on Brokey. Twist's going to take damage this time as he's the solo player that goes over to Anchor Long. This more back to the default setup, but a bit more pressure on B early. Sphinx flashed off, still gets Twist. He walked back into it. I would have thought he wide peeks that, at least if he's blind. Yeah, and they even they even actually called that set play. Those set flashes for that exact position. Twist flashes, Sphinx turned from it. Another flashbang was coming in from Brokey from deep. And man, completely blind. You're exactly right. That's so brutal. Twist is going to be frustrated after that one, especially when he watches it back later on. Smoke falls down in Monster Tunnel. Madden and Snappy to defend initially. I think even Snappy dropping the smoke over to his teammate. He's got low HP, going to tuck himself into a corner and allow Madden to bait for him. But Madden will be able to re-smoke this. And he's even got a Molotov as well when they start to feel the pressure committing. There's that third smoke on Monster. Phase still locked out. All four players here. Madden's now brought down very low, getting a little bit too flirty with that smoke as they spam through. The defense low, two red players inside of the site, but they've got backup. Sphinx as well is going to leap out of heaven, try and get closer. They've extinguished the Molotov. Where was it thrown from? Checks close. Rain almost overlooked it, but does get the kill to Snappy. He's trying to play a little bit cheeky, given his HP. Bomb is down. Rocks is trying to run. 25 seconds, he's caught. D has got him. Aggressive rotation, but they read it absolutely right. It actually looked a little bit dicey for the moment, but that... Four ends. New look on the gun round. Sphinx is going to push down the stairs. Shot out snappy. Dynamic and aggressive. Sphinx once more behind. Did they even s detect that? Okay, oh, I did. know. Oh, I was going to say, it looked like with the sound of the smoke extinguishing flames, I thought maybe somehow the silencer isn't revealed, but Twist will turn back. 
A little slower to react than perhaps I was expecting. But they'll get a gun for it. Twist's happy to have that M4 in his hand. Brokey peeks out. Monster sees two players pushing it, so they have that information. How do they try and take advantage of it? They're gonna challenge it. They're gonna wrap in behind them and carry it. Spars off with the tech nine. Never mind rotating away. Never mind trying to get the other side of the map. They're just gonna go, but they may not know. Having already killed one on the push and two in the site, that Dia was also in place on jungle. He's got a kill from his teammate in Hades as well, and we're back down to a two on two. Kerrigan has the M4, which, which Twist had pulled from them, but it's lost. And Brocky, the one that wasn't planting, is trying to rotate around but can't pick up anything to work with. Deagle in hand. He knows there's guns down on the inside of Monster, but doesn't dare push through that tunnel now. Hades going to smoke it off. They're just going to get on this. Nothing Brocky can even do. It's 9-4. I think Ants gets away with one there. I think they're very, very lucky to get away with this round. That was an extremely aggressive call across the board from the defense. Sphinx is one thing in door. But the push and monster, the follow-up as well, especially after you've confirmed it's against pistols, you've confirmed it's tech nines and deagles to push like that and continue pushing when you were spotted. You're very, very fortunate that they recover, that your teammates recover. This is brilliant from Kerrigan. Just finds a timing. He knows if they're going to win the round, it's got to be a massive risk. He takes it, gets the reward out of everything. Hades recovers. Deha recovers. Great performance from those two. Deha gets up to 11 kills. He's hit double digits as well. Sphinx one more time. Pushing party, looking towards playground. This time he's flash and activated to be even more aggressive. It's a lot of utility spent to neutralize him, though. When they played this in the group stage, it was map three and started out on the T side. It was an eight, seven, half. So you can't really judge how the full half would have gone. On their CT side, what I can say is that obviously Ents, uh, or excuse me, FaZe were only able to get six. That's less, or more than, they have less than that now. So they're in a slightly back foot position given that they lost that match 16-13, if that's anything to go by. Ooh, what a gamble. What a gamble from Ents here. I don't know if they need to do this. They seem to have a re, but at the moment, as we can see on the minimap, they're way out of position because equally Kerrigan, he's got one as well. Back to the B bomb site. And actually now with no pressure, Ents over rotates to A just in case they're gonna pick it up off to the kill on Sphinx. Now they all come back to the B bomb site. Madden, oh, he's a little bit fortunate. They're stuck in Monster Tunnel and Madden's able to shut them all down all on his lonesome. The sole defender as the rest of the players are rotating in is able to shut down the monster hit. But over towards Sandbag's reign is giving him a nightmare. His takes have been solid from this position. He's... Got Madden as well. Dia once more, though, rotates over, and they can actually go for a boost right now. Hades wants the angle with the AWP. Instead, he's got it. Rocks on the drive-by, though. We'll catch out Dia, and that'll allow the bomb plant. It's all to Hades. Brokey gets him down. I'd say that time FaZe almost gets lucky, considering how locked into a narrow corridor they were. Yeah, rain opens everything up. But, I mean, even, even with the amount of shifting going on in that defense, I, I mean, you know, I don't care how well drilled it is, there's always going to be a little bit of disorganization as you come back and you try and plant your feet, especially when Madden's under so much pressure, calling a monster hit. And as you're coming into that bomb, Side, multiple players it never felt like they got a solid setup to watch towards sandbags and rain's able to take advantage nine to five phase finally put a stop to it it was seven rounds straight for ends to get here at one point it was two to four now nine to five deal with the nade that's gonna dunk that's gonna nail rain he actually follows oh no rain he's i thought he was gonna slide straight into that he might be done though snappy pushing out rain's got the headshot it's rops that's found first Sphinx once more though wants this underpass position brokey on the awp can't find it and hades has twists in the meantime they've got a two man I almost say two and a half man advantage given rain now on 11 hp um, it, this is crazy how aggressive this half has been yeah he's going down no matter what good play from matt and this this has just been so aggressive aggressive from ends pretty much everywhere on the map sphinx has been pushed up in party so frequently if it's not party it's bathrooms snappy's had mid-round pushes towards the short waters i don't think have been as successful as he would have liked you've seen aggression downstairs FaZe have always had someone in their face. They have not been able to just slowly progress. Accurate in the fact that Roben is definitely being the one that's allowed. Try to get them into it and going to have to now. Five rounds down, starting out their CT side. Now, in my mind, they've always been a CT sided overpass team, but this is a deficit that might be hard to overcome when they've got players like Sphinx that have just been stealing map control away from them. Pistol rounds huge. Pistol rounds everything. Good kills coming out all, all three. All three of the opening going toward phase. Diha almost able to respond back. Rops is gushed up, and I think Diha actually needs to press the issue a little bit here, but he's going to sink, sink away. Snappy found one meanwhile. Kerrigan's got the line. He's gushed up. All of a sudden, this is doable, but look at the flank. It's, it's, rain. it's yeah. all on rain. Rain's absolutely sneaking in. Despite that the bomb goes down, they'll allow that to happen.
him because they know he's trying to get into a position and they can't afford to go down and let them sneak out of his sights. They have, though. They have gotten into pit. They've covered off sandbags. No idea. Rain. Oh, the Deagle. He normally nails those in one bullet. A little bit less with the USP, but now Snappy. I think he's a question knowing his answer. Stuck inside of the pit. Oh, the answer. A little more twisted and complicated than I would have thought, but Kerrigan does eventually put the exclamation mark on it. That's a, such a tough position to be in, that one versus three. Shout out to Snappy, though. He almost does it. If he had maybe an extra half second, would have been able to take down Kerrigan. Good on Eds to recover in that. They lose the first three players, and everything else comes back, but never considered the long flank from Rain coming through Monster. They thought about Sandbags. They never thought about the other tunnel. 10-6, Phase take the pistol. Ends have the pistol in the first half, so both teams winning their own CT-sided pistol round. Spinks with 17 kills and Hades with 15 to lead the way for ends for FaZe Clan. It's Rain on 12, Brokey on 10. Rain trying to find that sliver gap rather than be aggressive where the Molotovs, nades, and all sorts of utility typically lands. Knows he's also up against Eagles. Why give away a headshot early on? Probably assumes he's up against AK-47s as well. There's two in play. There's a Galil as well in Madden, as you can see. Spinks just lurking outside the B bomb site, looking for any pushes. Twist and Kerrigan on the initial defense, while Rops is going to be playing rotator between the two bomb sites. Rain, as we all know and love, will be playing the more aggressive position towards A in bathrooms, and Brokey opping behind him. When we get there. Double check from Brokey. Looks the right direction, but a little bit too soon. Won't spot anyone yet working toward the site. Now he will lay double the position. He's good for one. Good for one and a half, really. He got the tag on Hades as well through the headshot on Madden. That certainly benefit the other weapons. Both the M4s, the FAMAS, and not least of which the MP9, which we know loves to run and gun, and Kerrigan is very good at it. Rain's going to slide back into the corner of the bathrooms. Needs to be worried about utility as flashes Rain out from his teammates. Only looks for the first, though. He went down to the second. They expected more presence at long. That gives Dia a bit of a stance and a bit of a position, but they're certainly ready to respond. And we go 10 to 7 now. Yeah, I think that hit was, uh, I think it was a really cool tactic for us that you showed pretty much everyone out towards long, which is why there's so much attention from the defense there. And then you shift two back. But I think that long portion of the hit may have began a bit early before the other guys coming up banana, but coming up lane were really all that ready. Obviously, it helps when Rain is able to put a stop to one of them. 10-7, to three-round lead for N still, but whittled down, and certainly in this round, unarmored Deagles might be another chance for FaZe to extend the lead. Molotov placed once more. Madden goes straight through it. Rain's still trying to put a bit of extra damage in that direction. He'll tickle Deha. Just be aware that Sphinx has gotten across. If the nade damage is uh, is tickling Deha, what is the uh, the clothesline headshot on on Madden? Just a punch straight in the face. Okay. Nice. Rops in the stairs. Turns away, but he does have Brokey there in support to help keep that space. Going to be an easy kill. Snappy never considered it. Just three remaining: Spinks, Deha, and Hades. Hades was slow peeking up toward Rops, and I was going to say that Deagle can definitely be deadly in that position. Not ready for the second position, though, of Rain, who comes out from the bathrooms. And poor Deha, all by his lonesome. All by himself. You going to hang out inside the smoke? That's a magic trick and a half. All right, that's cool. He's back there, though. I thought he just full-on Houdini'd that. Yeah, just disappeared out of nowhere. 10-8, to two-round lead. Guns are coming back out. Hades got the Krieg in hand. Going old school. Four AKs as well. Brokey as well, picking up the op. As he invests heavily into the round. Nice that we get to the gun rounds, though. Another Krieg for Hades. I mean, this is interesting as well. Scoped weapon. He's used to using that right-click mechanic, perhaps. Saw a ton of it on Vertigo. I'm, all, I'm excited to see this NST side. This is one thing I really... Oh, hold the phone. Twist going to be pushing up behind that flashbang. Hades is on notice, though. There's a bit of a gap in there. Twist actually shoots behind him. I had no idea where those bullets came from. And he's tweaked out. He's got to back away. He had no idea what was going on. Got a little bit scared. And just wants to preserve his life. You can understand why. Keeping this into an even five-on-five five early on. 
Yeah, that was peculiar, wasn't it? That's a nice nade. Rops, though, knowing where it was thrown from and the trajectory of it, is able to punish Dia before it detonates. Brokey also getting spinks, so they've controlled water. They've controlled the initial B approach. Snappy is still going to anchor on that side. Meanwhile, Madden, though, has taken Rops down as he repeeks to try and give Rain some information. So they still have a bit of the map to work with, given that they're so spread out. They just need one more pick. If there's one more mistake, and Twists is the one that's going to be pursued, but Rain should catch Madden and Cross right now, and he's not even going to get far enough to find the Canadian in the corner. Yeah, Madden just trying to be a hero there, trying to take a lot of space. Hades, does he realize one's all the way out here? Ooh, no, he didn't. He couldn't find him around the rock. Twists. I thought he saw him the way he snapped back to the left. I thought he saw his shoulder yeah. when he went for the AK. Apparently not. Good positioning for Brocky. He's going to close the map. But, yeah, that's unfortunate for him with the Krieg. And really no no chance for trades on that round for the, for the NCT side. That was kind of everyone spread across the map taking their own individual fights. There was really nobody grouped up to be able to, 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 be able to swing and fight after the initial kill goes down. So just testing the water, seeing where they're going to be. So a lot of contact plays. Yeah, Twist, I'm not sure why he was so afraid of someone behind him. He just got so Tiny scared. He wouldn't have been there. I, I don't know, <laughs> I know. If he was shoot, like about to shoot and then thought he saw a flash. Or I think it's just because he never saw him in the, in the little crack or gap in the smoke. Nice easy round for FaZe previously. One of the things we really enjoyed watching from Ents, though, is their ability to change things up, throw a bunch of different looks at you. Look at the fast pace with the Tech-9. It's done so well. Kerrigan's going to hold on, though. Twist adds one as well. Over at the top of bridge, way in the back. He falls eventually to that tech nine, and there goes Rops. Oh, no, this is getting sketchy. Kerrigan's got the pistol out, but Rain slides through the smoke to help save the day. They lost more than they should have there. That fast play, it started so cleanly, and then the stopping of the shot, whether it was a reload needed or not, gave Spanks a second kill that he probably wasn't good for. And good read from Kerrigan as well. That single smoke on barrels so that they can charge the site he knows he has to support his teammate but man oh man 10 10 five straight for phase they're straight back in this game yeah this was this was dicey the defense bends but it doesn't quite break and it's almost able to crack in that would have been something special still it's beautiful if you're thinking long term in this half because phase had built up a, some of the bank some some decent bank behind these buys so that's a good way to chip some of it away Gonna need probably two wins in a row if your ends to take all the CT side of economy. Brokey's so overwhelmingly aggressive. Awkward fight for Snappy. Awkward fight for Brokey. He's done here, surely. Yeah, he goes down to a nade, and there's Hades. One more pick. The aggression at long is neutralized as well. Chaos across the map. Brokey was almost too fast for his own good. He overflicked that shot. Gotta admire the insanity, though. Stepping forward out of the flames. Monster Smoke going to come in for twists. So Solo holds on either side. Kerrigan at least trying to get a little bit of information. Too little, too late. Twist hears it. He's ready. Sprays in. Line up. He's got three. They went through the narrowest choke point. This round might be turned on its head. Twist on 13 HP. Hades on the AWP. And Kerrigan is on the move. He knows exactly where he is. And that AK is going to be a damn problem if Hades doesn't find a shot fast enough. Catches out Twist in transition, though no man's land in the open, Hades. Extinguishes in time. That actually gives Kerrigan's position away. He thought he had enough to do it. He thought perhaps he could get away with throwing the Molotov on top of him. And now Hades is going to plant the bomb and cleanly get reset. Forget the HP. This AWP is in the picture. He can bail out to CT spawn. He can go heaven. He's got options. Kerrigan has to spot him in doing that, though. And if he looks toward Catwalk, he would find him, but not quite. Hades has the position right. He's going to go over toward Jungle. He has the advantage in this. Kerrigan gave it away. He didn't expect him to have the utility to be able to cover off the flames at his feet. A second Molotov picked up, gets thrown toward the sandbags, but Hades slides out and saves a round. Yeah, I think Kerrigan might regret that Molotov. That gave away the game entirely. Hades wasn't even looking or considering in that direction. Brilliant clutch for Hades to put a stop to the defensive run. Five in a row for FaZe on defense before Ents are able to get around in what brilliant fashion it is in. Twist, that magical triple kill that we all know and love. We love these sequences from Twist. A great spray transfer onto Spinks, and it's all for nothing as Hades is able to win it out in the post plant. Ooh, big exhale, big cheers. 11 to 10, heading into round 22. They keep the lead as a result of it. FaZe finally shut down on the CT side. Money, this is it for them as well. It's not like they had a massive wealth built up. We saw a few rounds that went down with just two players surviving. Could have been a lot cleaner. Now, they're all in on this one, but game defining. I can't believe how aggressive some of these rounds have been from both CT sides. I, I love it. I mean, we yeah, saw that too. aggression from FaZe. It punished Na'Vi early. They didn't want to let Na'Vi get a footing in the game. That's when they get scary. Entz is trying to do the same thing right now, and it 
plays to their strength. Sprinks loves this. Flash is going to oh. catch everyone. I thought they were going to all be blind long enough not to be seen, and he would get away with it, but Twist just happens to turn to his left with enough vision to spot him. He took his time. I thought he was actually just going to continue walking over to jail over towards the corner, and that would have been the safety he needed. Unfortunately, caught full in the face with the flashbang. So, no more presence. That's the play at B. I think Kerrigan is considering coming through Monster Tunnel when that smoke fades. They're going to have the information. Oh, excuse me. Rain goes down. Brokey didn't quite have that angle. Now he's pushed up towards bathrooms. Rops has rotated back towards A. We're into a four on four, but very little utility. Two Molotovs and a smoke. What positions do you want to burn out? What positions do you want to block off? Brokey so close. But comfortable in that position. He's got Madden already. Hades doesn't dare go forward as this time I think he's one step too far removed from his underworld and his lair. He's got more invaders. Suddenly living in his own hell as they're going to get tied up on 11-11 yet once more. And then AWP. Oh my God, that was fast on Brokey. I was going to say goes down after the time. Absolutely not. He holds it. That's a great save. Brokey's the big one. And, and because because FaZe had just lost around previously, as soon as, as soon as Brokey goes down, first of all, that's an expensive weapon to be taken away. Might be one of the first best of fives I've ever casted that doesn't have Inferno in it. Yeah. First for everything. Well, it might be a first kill for Brokey in this position right now. Off angle to play with the M4. Does get flashed off of it, though, so he's got to fall out slightly. Look at Rops pushed up. Dia, I don't think he has any idea. He wouldn't have seen that. Rops was far enough over to the wall. It's not like he was careless with his feet placement. No, Rops wouldn't be. But Dia's ready for this. If he just parks himself here, uh-oh. Oh, 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 oh. I, don't, I don't think he fully caught it. I think he might be asleep at the wheel, and that's a very or, small pixel to catch. Yeah, exactly that. If he's looking yeah. at radar, your peripherals may not see those two pixels that showed. If you're staring at your crosshair, I think he reacts. Yeah, I could have glanced up, could have done any number of things. That's tough to lose. He's going to feel awful about that because he had it. Twists as well, a timing. Sphinx has been spotted. Immediate dink and cleanup from Twist. Him and Rops combining to control the entire center of the map, which Ents know they have to deal with, even if they don't want to. As unpleasant as it may seem, they have to go try and take it back, and Rops is making them pay. Triple kill in the round so far, and it all started with the shot on Adiha. And this is the money for Ents gone. This is why I said this was a risky call. But one that I don't doubt, the, or I don't, I don't fault them for making, knowing the economic situation of FaZe as well. All right, cool. Hades, just the man unwilling to die, finally gets taken down by Rops and that AWP removed. Phase first lead since very early in this game. Quad kill on Rops in the round as well. Looking phenomenal. Last time they had the lead, it was 4-2, and then this span of rounds, the seven in a row you mentioned at halftime, Jason came in for and... This is one of the things I liked about watching Ents uh, the other day and, and, and throughout this rise is, is they're able to adapt on the fly and throw a lot of different pacing options at you, a lot of, a lot of different tactics. They're going to have to find another one now, another solution. This T side has just fallen completely flat. It's been seven to one run for FaZe in this second half alone to snatch this lead in such powerful fashion. Nice double up from Rain. Nice triple up from Rain. And he's got safety. So a multi-kill from Twist that almost turns around. They end up getting away with it. Haiti saves it. He had a massive multi-kill in the last round from Rops, and then it's this time it's Rain's turn. You're seeing the individual performances yet again from FaZe stepping up. Everyone has been such a part of this team, and I think that's why Kerrigan, you know, I mentioned the late-night preparation. Look, he's no stranger to being an in-game leader. He's put in the hard work before, but I think he's more motivated than ever right now, knowing that he has a real chance at becoming the number one team in the world, I mean, getting his redemption. Top to bottom, in some senses, this is this is probably the best, uh, I, I, I guess, best amount of tools that he's had, even if you go back to some of those older all-star, like, super team FaZe Ross, this one, in terms of roles, in terms of how good these players are, project has really, really come together nicely with the addition of Grops. Question, question is, though, when, when they become the favorites and there's more eyes on them, because still Navi is the one you look to, still players have a great chance in that. We're still kind of establishing that territory. They're Not a phaser to win lose. this. I, exactly that. And that might change things slightly, depending on how people choose to approach them in terms of counter stratting. Yeah, you're peaking at the right moment, but you're also getting all eyes on you at the wrong moment. 13 to 11, two round lead for phase. Ents and Snappy desperately trying to come up with a solution. This time it's a triple boost to Pure in towards short water. A fourth player broke you with that op watching monster. It's a lot of resources in one position. A lot of faith in rain on the other side of the map. 
He's just going to stand square in the center of that doorway because the smoke means that he could. He wouldn't be seen. And if they dare try to spam either direction or make a movement toward either side, he could react to it. But he knows there's a timer. He's backed off, goes safely toward the site. And Brokey's over there now as well to guard him with the AWP. So it's just the triple boost at B. Now, the reason that's significant is because it only means one player's peeking. And as soon as you sense that, you know where they all are. You can Molotov off jungle. You can smoke off catwalk. Even at this point, if anyone were to spot that triple boost, they just pull the trigger on it. But it's a contact play. Oh, this, this is awful. If they turn this corner, this timing is everything. Utility is going to be out. Kerrigan's going to have to make a run in towards the pit. Spinks. Not aware where anyone is. They found an open bomb site. They have no idea where the defenders are. It's got to be a little bit weird. Kerrigan's close up. That smoke, that smoke, the one we just saw in front of Kerrigan, saves them, but Twist goes above and beyond. He'll shut the bomb down anyway, because I thought Kerrigan was denied the chance to do so. And a bomb going down, despite the awkwardness and the chaos within the site, that it was about to ensue inevitably. They could have backed off on it. Now, they have to uncomfortably fight forward, and Diaz desperate to try and get that bomb down once more. Rop's gonna take the same approach, saved by Hades. That might be the round saved altogether. Rain's <laughs> waiting. He's in the wings. They don't know where he is. They're searching toward the monster, and he's gonna lose track of Dia, who's drop down inside of the pit my god the timing how it's favored how it's switched how he spotted nice shot back onto dia rain tag to 19 and hades who's clutched down a one-on-one -on -one already versus twist has to do the same on rain man oh man how he ever saved this round with two big kills not just the one to close it but the one to deny rops that's unreal i, I just mentioned the interview a game where he kind of intimated that he sometimes feels like he doesn't have all the impact he would like he's not able to get stuck into the action as much as he'd like well it's making up for everything right now because he's all over the place he's saving their day in oh. nine different ways protecting the planter finding a pick onto the opposing offer and now his second 1v1 clutch this time against rain hades is doing everything to keep ends in this and they have the economy for phase once again on a breaking point two mp9s the op is still in the hands of brokey and two m4s but no money left in the tank for phase it's round 26 13 to 12 map two of these grand finals what a win that was. 14-11 and money would have been destroyed. Now they have a chance to break phase down, tie this up and take over the momentum. Smoke toward heaven, no one there yet. Madden wants to go in. Surprisingly, no ticks from that Molotov. Got through it. Kerrigan realizes he was having his butt touched. Turned around and found Sphinx behind him, trying to give him a spank. Returns the favor on the MP9. Kerrigan now holding from position and a reverse angle toward Monster, but can't get it done. Hades finds a shot on a Brokey as well. It's two on two, but they're trying to back off on this. They haven't committed. And again, it's rain. This time, not toward Monster. He's going to go back out toward the sandbags. MP9, close angle. Bomb to be planted by Snappy. Rops unwilling to go around the corner, knowing there's still an AWP, would have been able to spot that. But now he's aware that he has to go forward, that he has to try and find this kill. And still Hades has not found the other. So this time the op with even more to do, given that they are going to cover off both sides. And Rops finally puts the man who's been clutching all the rounds down. Yeah, what a great victory for FaZe, especially with the consequences that would have had if they were to lose it. And with that plant, might come right back into it with another buy as well. And this time too difficult for Hades in a one versus two. Ants not able to get comfortable securing these bomb sites. These set pieces, the opening kills all going the way of phase. No one able to get comfortable. Spinks not able to come through nearly as fast. Probably had to be a little confused of why he wasn't moving forward. Snappy not able to handle the pick from Rops. From up above and a nice kill as the smoke plumes. Phase just two rounds away from that two round lead in the series. A little bit of frustration showing up on the Ents' faces. Absolutely, and rightfully so. This is this is as close as you'd like. I mentioned it was 16-13 on this map in the group stages when they opened the tournament run for both respective teams, and Ents took that one. And I mean, a game like this plays right into one of the major advantages for FaZe, the experience. This is a new position from Rain. Contact again at B. They're going to give it up because they went aggressive toward the sandbags position. They went aggressive toward the connector position, but both those positions fail. They both get shut down. Madden with the first D as well, and Kerrigan manages only one before Sphinx turns it around. They might have to bail on this. The pace, the pace of this round for events actually neutralized the entire push from Rain. It neutralized everything. He had so much information, had control of the map, but obviously losing the bomb set on the other side, and you're right, this cannot be any attempt at a retake. There's no money left. Twist has 1,100. That's the most in the bank for anyone on phase. So they're hoping and praying that Ensa is going to fall back right into this stack. 
What a great hit, and obviously just one player, Diha, lurking. Heard two in the door. Heard the sandbags play as well, able to call that out to his teammates in perfect entries. This time, Ents finds all of them stepping into the bombsite out monster. They're actually heading right at it. But they don't need to escape because they haven't taken enough damage. It's going to be 13-14, just a one-round lead for FaZe. No one even gets really touched by the bomb. So the two guns saved over Brocky on an AWP again. Economy is the name of the game down the stretch, Matt. Uh, FaZe, they, they have to make those calls like they just did to save a couple weapons here or there to preserve the money they have. But if they ever get everything taken away from them, if they're ever to just get all the players deleted off the map in any of these round losses, man, Enz would have a bit of a, like a, a great path to steal this map away right at the end. One that looked like FaZe was being able to control it on the CT side. Back to Monster we go. Kerrigan extinguishes flames already. They'll expect that he's returned to the position of the barrels and they'll put more utility there, make it very uncomfortable for him. Somehow he's evaded most of that. Second Molotov doesn't touch him. He goes unscathed and only a bit of damage from the grenade. It still doesn't work out. He jumps out and gives himself up, but the kills come in from Rops. They have to bail out again. Broke. It's money. You're absolutely right. It's the, now, the, the good thing is it's the two rifles that survive, but the round gone 14-14. We've got a tie game, and Ents putting a late charge in for this. Yeah, and, and Snappy doing a, almost like Kerrigan-esque, <laughs> like calling just a straight-up rush, going far off script, back-to-back, fast-paced rounds towards the B bomb site to be able to get in and find that plant. FaZe even had four defenders at that bomb site. They still couldn't hold on to it. Nice work from Ents with the utility usage, the smoke wall, the counter flashbangs as well. Right in... Brokey going to sit this out. These are, these should be pretty much the only two weapons they have in the next round. And I imagine we'll see a timeout from FaZe. That losing bonus is ugly as well for the FaZe side of things. Kerrigan, 1900. Twist, 1950. Rops, 2350. They can't even really invest in a half buy to go around the op and M4. Now the question comes, this feels to me, how well is Snappy feeling this game? He's just been able to find success with two fast-paced rounds towards the B-bomb site. You can kind of toy with that. You can play with it a little bit and see if you can counter the defense, especially after you just saw them stack four players at this bomb site of the previous round. Snappy. Trying to get his teammate Spinks in position to get a better shot. So the in-game leader setting up his star, but no one on the other side of it. Stack up toward B again. There has been a lot of pressure on this side of the map, no question about it. And Kerrigan's trying to read that. In fact, even sending Rain that direction, who's normally your solo A defender. It's he instead that will take the helm. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna Molotov these barrels. At a perfect timing for Spinks to kind of peek out. They want to force Rain into the open. There's no smoke as well. Rain is going to have to make the run as soon as the Molotov, as soon as he sees it, sees it in the air. This duel could be everything. Actually, everyone's joining up. Rain's going to have to be very careful. That's the rifle in Oh, it missed. It missed. It did miss. You're absolutely right. He gets dinked either way, but it's only through the edge of the boxes. He's got to be careful not to go down, though, when he does. Madden's got the shot. Brokey has come over to cover off the side. He takes out Sphinx, but a Molotov forced out to jungle will put him straight into the crosshair of Hades, and Snappy seems to be suspicious of an area unclear. Twist comes out into it, and rightfully so. They stare it down. Snappy with a great read. Good call. Kerrigan at least recovers the AWP, but Entz... They've reached map point first. Bro, imagine imagine missing the toxic barrel Molotovs at 14-14 when the entire strategy depends on it landing. That's a disaster that could have been. And I like this hunting for Kerrigan with that AWP. They know he grabbed it. He's going to tuck himself into a cord. Madden has started to walk. Hades is here as well, cutting off the rotation from bathrooms. Kerrigan's going to go down. They're able to save absolutely nothing. 15-14. Ents have one chance. They stole it away right at the end. This was all phase. Remember? This was all Hades that stole it away as well. If yeah. You get technical about an individual performance. He kept him alive, but this was an 8-1 to one run for phase to start this half. Even further, 9-2 to two run. And Ents might just actually snatch away the past four, or the last four rounds of this map to tie the series up at one to one that would be incredible it's that or overtime 29 kills for hades his best performance at the perfect time one-on-one -on -one versus kerrigan 
and the 1v2, I mean, it was a 1v1 in the end, but the 1v2 essentially by getting Rops above to save his teammate and allow the bomb to go down. Spink's already pushed forward. He'll get the information based on sound. He may even be ready for this presence of reverse take. Not quite. Kerrigan swings in and takes him down. Good aggression this time, but it's over toward A for the first time in quite a while for Entz. I love this call from Kerrigan. I love this call from FaZe as well. You've had so much pressure on the B bomb, so let's just push out and see what's going to happen. Just win or lose to B because you've been able to handle their A pushes. They really haven't been able to get too much done at this kind of the bomb site. Everything has been done over towards B, so why not just take that option away from them and force them to do something they haven't been able to succeed at throughout this half? Forward to the smoke rain. Saw the shadow. Ready for the peak. Still the shot comes through. Madden wins out the exchange. He goes down to 22. An important win, but Rob's position perfectly to capitalize. And with no further action, look at Twist's position. Oh, this could be huge. Surely unless, you clear this. Uh, well, unless they turn. Yeah, okay, you're right. They look, but not far enough. They look back. It's a headshot. Clean for one. Now, that's information at least. I was going to say you either check it or you might get lucky that you turn around to line up utility, but they're going to rush it in. Two players, and already they've gotten Kerrigan back in position. They don't think they're going to arrive that fast. They think Twist was anchoring. Kerrigan's got to hit the shots. He manages it. Hey, equal to determine who feels like they gave this match away more. The good news is they both get to reset, catch their breath as we head into what could be one of our many overtimes, the way this match is going right now, Jason. Yeah, this could just be a classic story, though. We see the young and experienced team able to put up a fight, able to challenge, but when it gets down to the pressure moments, dropping them. Over time, no greater pressure than that. Facing 0-2 in the grand finals. Double monster setup for FaZe. They're gonna avoid any damage from this boost. Pending Rob's position, but yeah, he doesn't look like he's gonna slide back. That direction, good find from Madden, knowing the rain's normally aggressive somewhere, but it hasn't been in the connector all too often, so big pick to get early on. Yeah, but he's about to get dropped surely by Brokey. Oh, maybe not. Brokey looks the other direction. Man, it's got a second one. He opens up A. Rops has got to shift off, but this is a disaster. Twist with one kill. A little bit blind. Hades was going investigating. Entz is okay with giving up one player for the information. Another smoke is going to plume in towards Monster. They need to make a play soon on this, though, because Bomb's back towards T, and Snappy's going to grab it now. The reason I say that, no further smokes to cover off Monster. Should they have been spotted through those tunnels? Could have cost them. Snappy's being pretty patient on this call. He knows they have to rotate towards A. Rob's trying to get information, and he might just wait for them to give the site up himself. Oh, spotted. Kerrigan definitely spotted that. I don't think he did. I don't think he spotted that at all. He looks so oblivious to the fact that, that boost, he could have been punished by that easily. And they heard, right now, yeah, you're absolutely right. They heard the sound cue at the very least. They know where Kerrigan is. Russ, or Twist, excuse me, has rotated all the way back. Rops is going to start getting aggressive. FaZe have a good timing on all these flanks and all these rotations. Good find from Rops. Madden down. Now they know they're locked. They have to commit. Kerrigan slides out. Bomb dropped again. It's turning. FaZe somehow holding their nerve. Rops getting enough information for them not to over-rotate and over-react. And Kerrigan doubles up. Dia down. Bomb again at his feet. And he's not done there. Twist is going to come out and trade Sphinx. Round to FaZe. They open overtime first. Yeah, they had no business winning that round. And I, I think part of, the, part of the issue or part of the reason ends, uh, as I just mentioned, with inexperience getting to these kinds of situations, the last thing to kind of click for teams sometimes is that killer instinct. And hence it felt like this round had FaZe beat a number of ways for a long time. The slow play, the individualistic fights to follow it up in this five on three, no grouping up, no focus on trading. Faye's able to take the round right back, as unlikely as it felt, 16 to 15. Molly went to the park side that time, not top stairs. Let me extinguish it. Water nade. Lands beside Sphinx, but just inside the corner, he only takes six damage from it. No aggression this time from the CTs at all. Brocky, the only one that's over toward the A side, he's actually going to start to head out toward bathrooms now. It's Madden that's already started to clear top middle. Dia down below, Sphinx at water. It's pretty much a forced passive play right now from FaZe. With that in mind, Brokey can at least see toward top connector from his position. A lot of attention on Monster. These first two rounds of overtime from FaZe Clan, this is where they got beaten and bruised in regulation. I think they're going to try and go through this. Oh, there's a lot rotting on this. Kerrigan blind. Twist turns. Oh, great play. Kerrigan's even able to add one more, and that puts a stop to everything. Another smoke in towards Monster. Kerrigan's got the pistol out. He has no ammunition, just two bullets. He's going to tuck himself behind the pillar and wait for reinforcements to arrive. Waited for Twist to be able to turn and cover so that Kerrigan knew he had time to reload. It doesn't matter if they reload if they have Spink staring them down. Two great responses from him that clear out both of those positions that were problems. Rain already inside sight. A nice little position up on top of the wall pipe. Gives him a headshot angle. 
or at least a level angle to look toward Sandbags. Brokey, oh, he spotted. Nice play from Snappy. Brokey's got him in return. Time, time. You're absolutely right. Six seconds, they're on it. They're planting. Smoke down, but it means they know exactly where the planter is. Spraying in, trying to do the damage. It's Hades again, though. Evasive, as always, is alive again with his AWP to try and clutch back another round in overtime and a one on two. No way. Smoke down, makes it awkward, but he catches out 80s. Brocky, excuse me, the timing in his favor, and he looks up toward the window. This guy is having the game of his life right now. That's one of the sickest clutches that, that we've seen in some time. Just, just the sound cue, the misdirection. He makes the footstep falling back down the ramp and takes such a massive risk pushing forward. There's no reason for FaZe ever to expect that. What a brilliant performance from Hades in that clutch. And as you just mentioned, in the entirety of the game, he's the one that kept him alive through regulation, got him started in the comeback, and and this is brilliant. How is Brokey supposed to read that? 16-16. Single smoke to save him as well. They were already surrounding the platform. Brokey this time aggressive once more. AWP needs to be aware. They are very close. Oh, he's done. They're going to push through that shortly. They heard it. Good trade from Rain, but they've already lost the AWP. And Rain's going to fall as well. Couldn't reset his aim fast enough. Rops this time, though, is also over on the A site. So it's not like they've cleared the only two defenders by default this time in this round. And Rops has information. He's like, guys, they're not pushing up any further. Oh, Hades, you're going to go down for free. No chance of you reacting to that one. Dia's way out of position, and so is Snappy. There, there's nothing they can do to take advantage of any of the information they have. So Spinks, he's got a slow play and wait for his teammates to join up with them. Twist is playing way, way far back, and Kerrigan is certainly going to hustle over towards this B-bomb site. Monster Smoke just plumes right now. Last time they tried to press the issue through Monster, they got sprayed down, triple kill from Twist in a similar situation. This time he's out of that position. Single smoke set up for Snappy. Twist below where that's gonna plume, no one inside that window. Kerrigan, that would have been his point of rotation. He's gonna switch back over to the rifle as well. He had the AWP picked up. Twist trying to play the crack. You can hear them above. They're going to jump down straight onto him, and he couldn't set the aim fast enough. 41 HP left on Spinks. Kerrigan trying to force it, get closer, but Spinks spins out from inside of the pit. The nade still won't take him down. He's on 31, but Rops now has a chance at a one-on-one. -on -one. 50 HP snappy, only on 16. I'm sure you'd love for it to be Hades in these situations because he seems unbeatable, but this time snappy gets caught, and FaZe will take the 2-1 to -one score at the first half of overtime. Yeah, what an intense round. What a great job from Rops. Triple kill as he cleans everyone up to find on Hades early on but the clutch the clutch scenario twist had to have been so surprised to have seen Sphinx jumping down like this a madman and he almost does it all finds Kerrigan through the concrete couldn't evade Rops couldn't get into safety in time and snappy with only 16 HP in a really tough situation on how to play that one great clutch from Rops one round lead for phase 19 is the magic number to take a victory in overtime. Evidence in the sound cues of extinguishing the Molotov and that cues for a grenade that robs cops and goes down to 56. Both CT sides, both defensive sides have been solid for both teams. 10-5 scores in each half. Quick jump for information. They haven't cleared behind them. Spinks is down there, and he's hearing all of this. So even though they aren't going for the boost, he's calling that they're on the railing, and that's why you're getting spam going back in that direction with Kerrigan already down. They're only now starting to clear. Oh, Brokey missed the shot. I don't even mind it. A flashbang comes in as well. Rops was blinded. Oh, actually, Rops still Brokey. Oh, Lord. He flashed. Yeah. He fired into the door, killed his teammate, and then left it easy for Spinks to turn around and capitalize. That was chaotic, and it worked. <laughs> oh, that's got to feel horrible. What an awkward sequence that is. Especially because... Brokey was actually getting himself into a relevant position. Yeah, Brokey was making a play, and you admire it, because that smoke usually indicates Sna or, or Spinks was going to get aggressive. Brokey's coming through the smoke to solve the problem and just gets shot in the face by a teammate. Unfortunate. I think Rops might have even seen Spinks a little bit before the flash popped, which is what pulled out the shot. That or you just really can't organize any kind of communication in that scenario. So just an oopsie. Kill on Kerrigan. Here's the follow-up. So Rops gets fully blinded, and he's just aiming at the oh, end of the no. door. That, oh, it's like all Rops. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate. Oh. He was already pre-firing, and Brocky walks in. If Brocky walks into it. What yeah, can you do? and if you're Brocky, you're not really calling that you're making that play, or at least in any kind of situation where Rops can react to it. 
That's tough. ADs, as good as he's been, misses a shot, needs to bail out. They know they've done great damage to him. Snappy at half HP as well, but nobody towards Fountain can punish Hades' retreat. A single T-side round could be the factor in this. It is 12-5 overtime money, so it's not like you're going to be forced into an eco losing two in a row. But man, oh man, as you mentioned, it was 10-5 halves, respectively, in regulation. It's a lot of pressure on FaZe right now. Things calm down. Things calm down, finally. These rounds have been so high octane, so high energy from both squads. They've been heavily aggressive, very fast paced. Now, finally, we're going to get some breathing room. We can see how this plays out. One minute left in the fifth round of overtime as Brokey and Twist with the bomb on their back are going to join and meet up with Rops. Kerrigan and Rain controlling the center of the map, controlling the staircase. Spinks just now starting to push long. So he's going to start getting information and cut this map into smaller chunks. So Hades can rotate over towards the B-bomb site if he needs to. So Faye's running out of time to pull the trigger. Rotation from Hades. I'm sorry, trying to get in rain. He's been so successful from sandbags in the first half. Needs more than that now, though, because his teammates are dropping twists with one back, but didn't see Diaz sneaking up and over the top. He gets two before anyone even looks that direction. And it's going to be map point already for Entz. Their second, their second chance to close out the map. They had the one opportunity in regulation. Now they've got one opportunity in the first overtime. Great play from Spinks to push up and get that intel. Great job from Diha shifting into the bombsite as the AWPer comes over to take his position because Hades had that low health. He could not move into a more aggressive stance. Diha had to take up that ground. 18-17. Standard Molotov in play. Spink's going to try and capitalize. Not your AWP getting aggressive, but the rifle. Brokey on the other side was staring it down. He's done. That's twists. Excuse me. They've switched positions. Rain comes out to compensate, but he goes down to 48. Good damage done early by Entz. I'd be so interested to see stats on how often Spinks and Twists went head-to-head -head in these different positions with how aggressive they were in regulation during the first half oh so long ago, and now here in overtime. I feel like those two have butted heads so frequently, and I feel like I feel like Spinks is coming out on top of it. It's been a rough duel for Twists throughout this map. This time, it's a push out of Monster, as Madden is all the way in T-spawn. FaZe have no idea. One minute left on the clock. Three defenders at the A bomb site, and Madden closing in ever so slowly. Huge flank. Game-defining flank in Hades once again. The wall they cannot penetrate. Will shut out the AWP player on FaZe. Broke you down. Hades has empty a alleyway and empty aim to fire down a Kerrigan. No one to force him off the angle. Rops finally trades it, but here's Madden. And already the bomb drop rain in a one on three for the map. The series to go 1-1. One, one. And we switch back over to Ensis territory next as well. Their map pick to follow as rain goes hunting. Molotov to hold off bank. Just trying to isolate the situation, and it's such a desperate one for him to be in. Not going to get anywhere.